Hi, I'm Sarah, the Stitchin' Mommy, and I'm here for another update, a stitching update. It's been a month. It's February 5th today, and I've had the last regular update was the beginning of January, and then I had like three or four stitch-along demo tutorial type videos, um, which a lot of you enjoyed. So I'm hoping to do more of that on Mondays or Tuesdays, whichever day I can get time to stitch. And it's a win-win because I can get progress on my projects, but share some of my te technique or methods, I guess, with you and um, kind of have a little bit of a time to touch base with you um, as well, even though I'm not doing a proper update. So let's get started. I'll probably film this in two chunks because I have a lot of unique projects in February. Um, so I'm going to do all of the January recap and then I'll pause and reorganize myself and come back and do January, February, and then you can, I'll piece it together later for you. But I thought I would mention for some of you that were worried about Royal Holiday not getting enough air time, <laughs> I have decided she's still on my wall. I didn't take her down with all of the Christmas decorations. She's brand newly finished and I just... It actually had not occurred to me, like, our Christmas stuff had been put away for like a week and then I remember, realized she was still up there on my wall above my computer. Like, oh, oh yeah, well maybe I'll just leave her there until spring. So March 1st when I will put Spring Queen up, um, then she'll come down. But I decided I'd leave her for now. Um, so she's still on my wall, looking gorgeous. Um, and as you can see over here, I've switched out my Joyful World to February, and I framed my temperature garden. So I think last time I may not have been done. I actually didn't go back and check to see what I shared with you last time, so I may be totally wrong. I'll, I'll put in pictures if I have something to show from a previous video, but my words may not be accurate of what is, um what things really were like last time, because I don't really remember. That's kind of the downside of doing them only once a month. Um, I'll show you closer. But I picked the dark wood frame because it matches the dark wood frame I already had over here and the dark wood of the bookshelf, so it kind of all goes together. It's not exactly the same, but it's close. And I got this at Michael's. It's an eight by eight inch frame. And this is 32 count one over one on MCG Textiles white linen. So it's little, if, if any of you are doing this on 14, 16, 18, it's gonna be bigger than eight by eight, but uh, mine could fit in an eight by eight because it was 32 count. It's a little bit wonky, like right here, you can see maybe it's not stretched properly, but it's close enough. I think it's really cute and fun and I'm really happy with it. Um, I got all of December finished and I'm actually really happy that I did this in 2017 because I actually was able to get some purple, like colder colors in. There's a few throughout January, whereas our past January that we just had has been so warm. It's been like in the 70s and even in the 80s, which I know there's so many, so much of our country that is covered in ice and snow. <laughs> So it's just the strangest thing that we are having a really, really warm winter. And it's going to keep going like that. Um, and I know Dawn in Switzerland has been having a really warm winter too. So it's just interesting how pockets of the Northern Hemisphere have been having winter, like extreme, and then other pockets have been having a really warm winter. So it's, it's kind of strange. But I'm really happy that I got the purple colors included in from last January when we actually had a cold snap for us where the high was like, I think 46 was maybe this coldest one. And for Southern California, that's pretty cold. It'll get below freezing at night and then that will be the high in the morning or during the day. Um, so, and the hottest was 113, I believe, in August. So that's that was my 2017 Temperature garden. Oh. I didn't know if that would work. It actually, 
I figured I'd maybe you just have to prop it up for the rest of the video, but it worked. Yay. Okay. So, and D Stitcher um, here on Floss Tube was, she has started the temp her temperature garden now. Um, but before she bought it, she was talking about, um, she asked me if anyone in her area had, um, had started the temperature garden and was working on it. And that got me thinking about where, where all of my temperature garden patterns have been headed around the world. Um, because I keep statistics just for fun of where my Etsy sales in general go, um, just cause it's fun to see, um, which countries are represented in which states. And I have pins on a map that show where the different sales come from in general. But I thought it would be fun to make a separate Excel sheet of just the temperature garden. Since this is such a regional project, everybody's is going to be very different. And so I thought it would be fun to track that. And so um, as of today, there are 31 different states represented who are doing of people who are doing a temperature garden and 10 countries besides the U.S. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's pretty widespread. Um, so yeah, it's just been fun that, that, that there's been a lot of interest and a lot of people are stitching it this year in 2018. So it's fun to, to watch all of your progress. Um, and that's on my Etsy shop and I can link that below. Um, for my stitching, this in January, I started with the Frosted Pumpkin Storytime Sampler and this is going to be my personal stitch along throughout 2018. And... Um, Shelly, Key X Stitch, has recently started it as well, so she'll be stitching this this year also. If anybody else has it and hasn't started it, um, feel free to join us. This was 2015's year-long stitch along, so um, a lot of you probably have already finished it, but I did not know about the Frosted Pumpkin in 2015, and I thought it was really cute, so I wanted to do it now. So I don't think... I don't remember. As of my video, I don't think I had January finished. Um, but if I did, forgive me. If I did not, this is what it looked like last time. And this is what it looks like now. And I have January and February finished and a start of the banner. My my goal is to do each um, each month in that month towards the beginning of the month to make sure it gets finished and at least one string in the banner. So what I did in January is I did one string in the banner and I did the January block, just barely finished it. Um, I think there were a few days I didn't get a lot of stitching time. And then February I did one more string over in this variegated stuff um, and then worked on the February chunk and actually got it finished last night um, just after the Super Bowl and stitched on it during the Super Bowl <laughs> and had a, a little bit of stitching time left so I came back up here and did this DMC color and the start of the letters um, which is also DMC the rest of the this color this color and this color are all weeks dye works and there's two other weeks dye works also so it's kind of fun to have the variegation present um, this is the secret garden there's the key up here, and the door, and the wall, and the bushes, and she's got a little bird in her hand, which is kind of cute. I didn't even know that was a bird until I was investigating more, um, and some flowers. And so that's really cute. I was thinking of including this in, in the February Olympics challenge, but I'm done now. So I think I'll, the, the days that I probably would have um, fit this in. I'll go ahead and use some other of my February pieces instead to give them some more love because my goal on this is technically finished. I could work more on the banner but um, I think I'll go ahead and give some of my other pieces some love since I got my goal complete on that one. And this is Lana Blue by MCG Textiles 32 count Lana Blue. It's it's a color that's no longer available and I found it on eBay and thought it would look good for this piece. Um, the next thing I worked on, 
I gave that five days in January and just barely got it finished. And in February, I was I gave it four days because most of my January pieces or February pieces are only going to get four days because it's a shorter month. And there's a few days in the Olympics challenge that I can't that I needed to pick other projects for because my February pieces didn't fit the theme. So each of my main focus February pieces is only going to get four days. And so that had four days and I actually got it done. So that was really exciting. Um, in January, my last four day, my next four day project was April Fairy by Heaven and Earth Designs. Quick Stitch. It's a quick stitch one. I think they only have quick stitch in this one. This is what it will look like by Hannah Lynn. And I finished two diagonals. I really stretched that. Um, I wrote down here, um, I added a day and a half to finish my second diagonal because I just really wanted to finish it. <laughs> and I'll show you why here in a minute. This is what it looked like last time. And here's where I got to in January. And the reason I wanted to get to the bottom of the second diagonal was to do more of the red. Because the first diagonal had a little bit, but I really wanted to do more of the, the other colors. So, still in her hair, but, and I will be for an, a little while now, <laughs> but it's fun. And I'm stitching this on 28 count Rose Monaco, one over one, and in a stitch, stitch by stitch diagonal method which is a slower but neater stitch. And it's been fun to do. I did a little um, demo stitch along working on this project. If you're interested in what I, how I did that, you can go find that in my channel. I have playlists now, if anybody is curious. I, I broke up my, my videos into different playlists. I have a small playlist that just has whip parades and finish parades. There's just one video of each at the moment, but I figured down the line I may do more whip parades. I'm not sure. And then demos and tutorials are kind of all together and um, updates are together. And I have a separate one for Year of Whips too. So if anything is exclusively Year of Whips, that goes in that one for just for ease of finding it. So my... Next one I gave five days to in Feb, Feb January <laughs> was my Winter Wonderland Band Sampler by Chatelaine. This is what it will look like. And I had this top part m mostly finished. Not quite. There's a little bit more to do. And then I finished that and kind of worked my way down here to get started on this scene. So I was telling you before, ideally my goal would be to finish this scene in 2018. Um, and I think that's doable. I have two more weeks this year on, or two more five day chunks to work on this. So I think that's doable. I'm super excited to get down to these little one, one over one animals. So maybe next time I get, I work on it, I can get that far. Here's what it looked like last time. And... This is what it looks like now. So um, I am beading as I go. So I have bicombs and seed beads and metallic and Gloriana and silk lame, which sparkles in real life, but it's a little hard to see the sparkle of the silk lame. All the white is silk lame. It's it's silky, sparkly stuff. And this this specialty stitch band was so much fun. I think those are called rice stitches. I've never done them before. Um, it was using DMC, and then I added beads, some metallic and some beads in there, which just was a lot of fun. And then I came down here and completely finished this house. All the back stitching is done on that. Um, there's a touch of Gloriana silk in there in the shutters. They're uh, green, green and brown shutters. And this door is actually um, this color, Bane Tree, which is a dinky dye. But it's covered with, with a lot of straight stitches. So, And I got started on these things, this chimney of this house and the start of the big tree in the middle. So that's, that's how far I got. 
I went ahead and put 2017 in there because it's when I started <clears throat> my first shadowing. So I just decided that's what the, the year I wanted it in there. And these little backstitched leaf things were kind of fun to do. So that was that. I won't work on that again for a little while. I don't remember. All of these, April Fairy will get another week in the year and this will get another two weeks and I, I just don't remember where they all are. My spreadsheet is on my computer, so you'll see it again eventually. Um, and the next thing I worked on was the Nativity, which I'm doing for... Oh yeah, my April Fairy, I did that for Full Coverage Fanatics Fantasy, which was the January theme. It was either Fantasy or Grey, and I used that one as Fantasy because she's a fairy, technically. And this one I was using for quick, for the Full Coverage Fanatics Winter. Um, and I did a column, a column on page one during December as well, and so that counted for winter, and then I did a second column here in January in a touch of a third. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll get into that more later. So I did in January, so so overall for, for the quarterly winter cell in Full Coverage Fanatics, I've done a little over two columns and I do have that pegged for one more day in the Olympics challenge. So hopefully I'll get a little bit more done on that, that last column before I'll call it a wrap on the winter cell. <clears throat> Way back here. I didn't move it forward. So this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. <clears throat> and here it is now. There's more of the palm tree and you can see the edge of the the trunk there. I don't want it to be too washed out. It's hard to tell what it will end up looking like in the... Um, and then I got started on the <clears throat> next column. Some of these dark blues were showing up here as well, so I like to do them all in the whole column before parking them. So some of these dark blues were also down here, so that's why I kind of went crazy down here. Um, so maybe one and a third one and a quarter of a column in January, and then I'll have one more day in February that I'll tell you about in my February plans to get more done in, in this column because in order to finish this page for Year of Whips, I need to finish this column and one more before the end of the year, and I have one more five-day chunk on this. Um, so ideally, I'll have at least half of this column finished before I move on, and then I could get one and a half done next time. Um... So that's fun, and you'll see that again next month because I have that next one more day on it. <clears throat> and then I worked on, that was kind of the thing. I got to the end of my column and just wanted to do my diamond painting. I kind of felt like, okay, I've got to the end of a column. It's a good stopping point, and I kind of just killed my desire to keep working kind of faded a lot. I went ahead and kept working a little bit more on on the diagonal, I mean on the next column like you saw because I knew I needed to and I had more days left in my rotation but I figured you know what the weekend was coming up I just felt like working on my diamond painting so I put it away and worked on my diamond painting <laughs> and I'm really happy about it so I think I would like to do try to get some time every month to work on my diamond painting. I don't know if that will happen, but it would be nice to get a little bit more done. Maybe a column a month, a diagonal a month or something. So we'll see. This is what it will look like. A colorful winter scene. I, there's no name. If you look on AliExpress.com and just type in fall leaves in the diamond painting se section, you'll probably find it. It's sold by a variety of sellers um, in a variety of sizes. So... You should be able to find that if you want that one. And this is what it looked like the last time you saw it. And uh, I bent a little bit waiting here. 
And here's where it is now. So I finished one more diagonal. I worked on this for like a couple days, part of a couple days, because I don't have super big chunks on the weekend, so I kind of just whenever I got around to it. This bush, like the, the partition to this little flower bush is finished. There's more of the path, there's more of these tree trunks, this other tree, the sky, and the start of another tree on the other side. So that was fun to do. Always a joy. I think I, it, may, it might be fun to always have one diamond painting going. So when I get closer to the end on that one, I can add, put another one on my wish list or something. So we'll see. It's fun. I don't think I want to do like a bunch of them because of my storage system for the little beads only really allows for one project at a, t at a time unless I got went nuts with the storage solutions. And I don't really want to do that with this craft. I'm already like going hog wild and cross stitch. <laughs> so that's just fine. Um, oh yeah. The next thing I worked on for five days was falling leaves. And it's my little DMC um, free chart that I am work was working on 40 count silk gauze, one over one. And um, it's still available on their Asian site, so I'll link that below if you're interested as if it's a free chart. still It's not on the US site anymore, um, but the Asian site still has it, so I can link that. I did a little stitch along with this one as well, and I finished it, and I framed it, and you can see it. I put it over here on my bookshelf, right here. Super tiny, so I'll bring it closer. <laughs> It turned out so cute. It's in this tiny little frame that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's a two inch square frame. So it is itty bitty. Like these are my little scissors. That's how big it is. You know how small these stork scissors are. So pretty tiny and it's adorable. So I have, I, I didn't, this is, this was so easy to frame. I took the back off. Um, I can even show you actually. It had these little um, rotating things on the back. Make sure it's still filming. Ah! To take this off, I it had um, a little picture inside. I flipped the picture over and just folded the silk gauze over the picture so that the white part would be the background and just folded it in there and put this on top. And it's done. <laughs> so I thought that was really cute. It's just perfect. They had two other two two inch square frames and they were both a lot more blingy and didn't really fit this piece. So I thought going with the white one was was perfect. So especially since I wanted a white background behind the see-through fabric. So I used color and cotton floss. I used antique gold, rust orange, eat your greens, and flagstone from Color and Cotton, which Ann P gifted me for my birthday. So, and Shelly Key X Stitch gave me the silk gauze just because she didn't want it. And so this piece was free to stitch, just my time. And the uh, four to three fifty for the frame. <laughs> so that's fun. I'm really happy with how that turned out and I'll probably leave it up year round just because it's adorable. Okay. So the next thing I worked on was my snow queen for six days at the end of the month because she, I really want to get her done. There's a little bit of, ah, of the trunk along here. Um, I really wanted to get her done, and I really do want to get her done in 2018. So I figured she could have a day that had a rotation with an extra day. And I I was looking at my rotation again, and I put her like in August maybe, and then just November and December, and then realized that was really dumb because December is always too busy to get a lot of stitching time, so I don't want to have 
the stress of trying to finish something this big in December. So I switched her out for Villa Mirabilia, which I put in December, and then she's up in June, I think. So she's going to get one more day for the Olympics challenge as well. And then another five day, or maybe it's, I don't know if it is June. Another day, another month at some point. I think it might be June. I was hoping to give her another six day one, but I may have to rearrange things again because giving her a six day rotation was kind of fun. So got a lot of progress done on her. Really happy with that as well. I did a stitch along with her also. She is done on 14 count light blue Ada. And this is what she looked like last time. And here is where she is now. So, really happy with my progress. And as I've said before, I'm working from the top down in rows, rough, rough rows, not concrete rows, but trying to fill up the rows completely before I move down too far. Um, the exception is in these beads. I wanted this side of the beads and Krynik is completely finished. Um, when I was beading this side, I wanted to make sure I had a really long string because I didn't want the um, the beads to fall off and there's really nowhere down there to anchor things. So I wanted it to be as strong as possible by not having, by all being connected to the same string. So when I ended up with this, did this side the same way. And I, on, on camera, I did some fractionals in here and I beaded this snowflake. I did some more beading and there's some fun fun little snowflakes out of Krynik around these silver beads in her dress. And they'll be like that throughout the whole dress. I've just done these three so far. And there's Krynik snowflakes here, and there's Krynik regular cross stitches in here as well. And so I've done a few of those. Um, done more of the trunk, more of her skirt, and some back stitching. Got all the back stitching done on these little like holly holly leaves and vines and around her skirt. So it's just a lot of fun. I'm really happy with this. There is a good chance I'll get her done this year. So um, that's still my goal. She's a year of whips piece. Um, and you'll see her again one more day in February. And what was next? So she was my last official January piece. Oh, it looks like, no, never mind. My notes were making sense. <laughs> I recently took my shower, so my hair is still kind of not done and wet. But she was my last official piece in January, and you already saw my first piece in February, but I had also my travel piece, which was Greetings from the Park, which is Frosted Pumpkin's second National Park stitch along. I finished the first last February. There's a good chance I'll finish this one this February, so it worked out. Um, I'm not done yet, but I have made a good amount of progress. Just working on it in the car here and there. So this is what it looked like last time. And here it is now. <clears throat> so I finished, I think I was already working on these. These were all done before January started. So I did a good amount of work um, in the Grand Canyon and Yosemite, and I'm starting to work on her face. Her face is half done. Um, but what I've decided to do is I'm kind of going, picking colors from the top down. So if the next color, this one is out of order because the next color I need to do is this like reddish color in here that's still missing. And that's the same color they use on their mouths. So I wanted to do it I wanted to be able to backstitch their mouths at the same time I had that color out. So I went ahead and did her face first because it's not found anywhere else, that color. So that when I do the next official color according to my plan, um, then I can backstitch the mouth at the same time when I have that color out. And I did these little boots when I was doing that color up here because I had it on my... I had it on my needle and I wanted to just get it done. So these boots are not finished, but they are that color is stitched down there in the border area. <clears throat> so there's not a 
a ton left. I mean, as with Shelly is always saying with Frosted Pumpkin that there's always, oh yeah, one more thing. Oh yeah, two more colors. Oh yeah, I still have to do that. Oh yeah, there's one little thing here. Like there's always a few little details that you haven't done yet that you still need to do. Like, um, but it's close. And so I'm pretty sure I'll be able to finish it in February and I have, it might see some time during the Olympics challenge too. So I'll, I'll share that later. Um, something with um, floss tube. I'm close to caught up. I still have time. <laughs> I'm close to caught up. I'm less than a week behind now and I have um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy to thank for that because she just like heard this tip from somewhere else but I heard it from her so I'm going to thank her for that. Watching them on 1.5 speed it's so nice. Like when I first heard that, I was thinking, that's going to be weird. Like, everybody will sound like chipmunks, and it's just going to be strange. But the way they have it, like, the they've worked the technology that you can watch them quickly, and they just sound like they're talking faster. They don't sound like chipmunks. <laughs> so it's really nice. There's a couple people that you can speed up to two, two speed, and there's some people that you can only go as high as 1.25 because they just naturally talk fast. But a lot of people, you can do 1.5. And it really helps to get through them quicker um, and still in like see all the content and interact with everybody. So I'm so excited that I'm not three weeks behind anymore. I'm only almost one week behind. So hopefully as soon as I get all the way caught up, um, I will probably go back to watching most people at normal speed. But um, I always have that in my back pocket in case I need to get caught up again. So... Um, Something that Christine from Calico Whimsy talked about in her planning is she likes to do, to pull out her oldest whip and try to finish her oldest whip every year just to kind of keep the older ones from getting too stagnant because what she said about it is so true where you the longer it lingers the long the, the like the less it calls to you all the new things are constantly clamoring for your attention and the old ones just kind of get forgotten and continue to be forgotten. And I am working on one of my old projects already this year, the Christmas wreath, which is about 20 years old. But I have another one that's 22 years old. <laughs> and so Midsummer Roses by Paula Vaughn is now going to be in my year of whips. Um, it's back here. So I decided to take out tea and cakes from my year of whips and I updated my album already um tea and cakes was the little lakeside Doreen Jones stitch along earlier last year it's really cute but and I was giving it three weeks but it's very detailed with a lot of backstitch and which I and I enjoy backstitch but it is very detailed and it's not um it does, it's not like one of my favorites, I guess I should say. A lot of the other ones on there, I'm like, oh, I can't take that one out. I can't take that one out. And that one was like, eh, I guess I could take that one out. So that's the one that got scrapped for Year of Whips um, to repl be replaced with Midsummer Roses. So this is going to be, we'll, we'll receive three rotations in 2018. I don't know if there's a chance it'll get done because there's a lot of work left to do, but um, it's possible. There's a lot of space on here, but it is, it's undone, but it is 14 count. And I'm always surprised at how quickly I can fill up the space on 14 count because the same space on a smaller count fabric will, like a five by five chunk of, of smaller count fabric will take longer to fill up than something that's 14 count because there's fewer stitches. So it could end up being fine and I could end up finishing it. So there's a chance. And you would have seen this in my in my whip parade. Um, but this is how far I got. I started this in 1996 when I was in high school. Um, and I remember picking it up again as a, as a young adult, um, either college or young married or something, and noticing that the way I do my fractionals now, it, which you would have seen in my recent stitch along video with snow queen is different than I did in college or in high school. I 
I would do three quarter stitches a lot and so that where there's diagonals in here it, in the back stitching there's two three quarter stitches so it's really dense and I don't want to do it that way anymore so part of me has been avoiding this because I don't want to necessarily have two different methods of stitching on here but I think I'm just gonna go for it I'm gonna do it the way I like to do it now and just just do it so this will actually the first time this was coming up the tea and cakes chunk was gonna come up would be in um, February so I will go ahead and start working on this in February and when I get to my plans I'll show you where it's gonna come but I wanted to share with you that I've made a change in my year of whips so and that's thanks to to Christine because oh and oh yeah and we were thinking of maybe doing a sal for that like oldest whip sal or something as for for anybody that wants to work pick up their oldest whip and work on it this year and try to finish it um, to just kind of get dig through some of those old ones that are lingering and just make yourself do them and finish them up and I know I recently started watching Stitching Marie. Um, she's been commenting on my videos for a long time, and I just realized she had a floss tube video, so I went and watched her. She's from Poland, I think, and she has been doing that this year, too. A lot of her year of whips pieces are new starts, but there's several in there that are old whips that she, one of them she started in grade school, so, um, and she finished it. So it's really exciting to, so she's kind of doing the similar thing. So if you want to work on your oldest whip, you know, Feel free to use that hashtag in Instagram, oldest whip sell, and tag Calico, Whimsy, and Cal tag Stitch and Mommy, and we can we can enjoy seeing your progress on just getting those old ones out of our out of our stash. Um, and one more thing before I go and switch to February is for the January full coverage fanatics group. Um, I knew there were going to be some prizes for the by the number sell like at the end of the year and I wasn't I think I may have ran across a comment at some point where there was going to be prizes for the other stitch alongs as well but I didn't really pay attention that much I went ahead and posted my April fairy I posted my nativity um, so I had some content in those stitch alongs and I, I'm not doing the by the number sell but I ended up winning um, their monthly drawing for the, probably for the winter sell, maybe, well, maybe, the, no, the January one, probably April Ferry for the January one. Anyways, one of those, you know, monthly challenges, I, I won the drawing, so I, uh, won some needle minders from No Name Needle Minders, and I picked them out, and I'm not sure exactly when I'll get them, um, but when I do, I'll definitely share those with you. So I've never ordered from her before, so that'll be fun to get those. And I ordered the tiniest size because I thought it would be fun to get, to make, have a lot of, a few more little ones for, since I stitch in hand, I like the lightweight ones. So I got um, several little ones from her. So that'll be fun. I'm excited to see those. And now I think I will transition to February and share with you my February focus pieces and then what I'm going to do for the Olympics challenge. So let me kind of resituate myself and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back for February. Um, I have all my plans written out in my little planner. Um, and some of them might be subject to change, but I will probably stick with this pretty closely. Um, like I said before, there will be, I have my standard um, monthly pieces where I have a full coverage piece for the month, a full coverage piece for the quarterly sell, a fancy lady story time sampler, and two other pieces. So those are my six official February pieces. Um, I also wanted to participate in Stitch Mania's uh, Olympics sell, and the Olympics officially start on Friday for opening ceremony. Um, so the Olympic sell starts Friday on the 9th. And so I had... I try to fit in my February pieces in the Olympic cell as much as possible just to make sure that those pieces I picked got some love. And I managed to make it work so that each February piece gets at least four days. Um, and 
Let's see. One, two, three. Yeah, at least pretty much four days. And then there's a couple days in the challenge that didn't really work with any of my February pieces. So I picked a different piece, but it kept it as a year of whip, year of whips piece. So that even though it wasn't February, it was still something that I want to try to get done this year. So if it gets a little extra tension, that's not a bad thing. So the first four days of the month ended yesterday because today is the 5th. And I did the story time sampler and I already showed that to you. And I got February's little thing done and a little bit more on the banner. So that was a win. Starting today and through the 8th, I am going to work on my quick stitch iris from... Heaven and Earth Designs. This is a this is Josephine Wall. Um, it's a tiny portion of a really big piece she's done, and I don't remember what that big piece is called. But this is a little one. I think you can still get it. I'll link it below if that is the case. Pretty sure it's still there. Um, I this was my first Heaven and Earth design. The copyright on this one is 2006. So this is 12 years old. Um, and as you if you remember, if you've been watching my videos for a little while, I restarted this last year because I had started it 2 over 1 on 25 count, which is what they recommend. Um, but it was it was too thick and I just kind of didn't really like stitching on it and it ended up wallowing in my box for a long time. And then when I discovered floss tube, I realized that a lot of people love 1 over 1 on 25 count. So since I already had the fabric cut, I figured it was worth a try. Um, that was one of the methods I had not yet tried. I'd, I'd tried 28 count one over one, and 25 count two over one half stitch, and 28 count two over one half stitch, and 18 count and 22 count ha two over one half stitch, and 18 count one over one full cross. Um, I've tried a lot of t a lot of different things for full coverage pieces, um, but one over one on 25 count I had not yet tried. So I figured. It was worth a shot, and I'm really, really, really happy I restarted. So if you have discovered you're working on a 25 count full coverage piece, one over, two over one, and you are hesitant that it's going to be too bulky, just restart it. Like, I know some people love how thick that looks, and if you like that, that's fine. But I know a lot of people find it too bulky, especially if there's a lot of confetti. And this piece does have a good amount of confetti. As you know, Josephine Wall is known for confetti. Just like Amy Stewart. <laughs> so, um, this one. So this is where I'm at on this one. I decided to do this in diagonals, and over here you can see the fuzz from where I frogged a bunch of my previous work, which I had been doing cross country. So that'll that'll you know be stitched over later. So I'm not worried about that. But I was doing the diagonal stitch by stitch method on this as well. I may or may not continue with that. I may do just cross country diagonals. Um, if if this one ever gets finished, which I hope it will, it's a smaller one. Um, I would like to give it to my aunt because she loves irises. And this is not a year of whips piece because I'm working on the diagonal again, just like quick stitch April Fairy. It's gonna go and like touch this page and this page before it finishes one full page because I'm going to do full diagonals you know all the way down the piece so finishing one page isn't not my I'm not aiming for that necessarily so it, it that won't happen this year but um I would like to get some more time the last time I worked on this I spent half the time ripping out stitches and half the time and and some of the time putting in new stitches so this time all new stitches I'm excited to see how far I can get so I'll do that for four days because it didn't really fit in any of the Olympics themes very well. So I went ahead and gave it a full four days before the Olympics challenge even starts. The first day of the Olympics is the 9th and that day is opening ceremonies, work on a recent or new start. Who am I to say no to a new start? So my new start that I chose for Got all the beads. Can you guess? <laughs> the new start I chose for this is Teresa Wensler's Dragon Ride, which I will be stitching for my younger son who likes dragons and gold things. So this will be perfect for him. It's 
It's got a few beads. And I will work it on this 28 count even weave. I believe it's MCG Textiles. It's called Light Blue. And it is currently found at Hobby Lobby. So, um, I'm doing it on 28 count instead of um, 32 like I would a lot of like fancy ladies. I prefer to do those on 32. I'm doing this on 28 because the, the whole man is done one over one. So I'm more comfortable doing one over one on 28. So I'm going to go ahead and use 28 for everything. And I think this, um, <laughs> I just heard a, um, I sold something. My phone let me know. This, this, like, intricate border with the blue showing through, it's going to make the gold really pop, and I think it'll look really nice on 28 count. So, that's my new start, and this will see several days throughout the challenge. But that'll be for the first day. The second day on the 10th is a winter-themed, because it's the Winter Olympics. And so for that, I'm going to work on my Snow Queen another day. Originally, I was thinking Winter Wonderland Band Sampler, but since she's a year of whips and the Chatelaine is not, she won. <laughs> Give her another day on that, so she'll get another day on the 10th. And on the 11th, I it's South Korea, so a Korean-themed thing. Um, they recommended maybe Soda Stitch, which I have a couple Soda Stitch patterns now, but I really would rather work on something I already have started for a year of whips. Or, or for one of my February pieces. So I didn't really want another new start. So I went with the colors, red, white, red, blue, white, and black, which are the Korean colors. Um, because, and, and none of my, none of my February pieces fit that description either. So I picked a Year of Whips piece, which is Knitting Woman. Because she has red, blue, white, and black. So not very Korean, I understand, but she matched the colors and she's a year, whip, year of whips piece. She will get a full, you know, two full five day rotations later on in the year, but she'll get this one day in February. She is stitched on 22 count Ada, two over one half stitch. And I've got the whole top row done, so I'll keep working down here. My goal on this is to get one or two pages done for Year of Whips. So that's where she's starting at. One day on her. And then the 12th is for mascots, which are various animals. So they said work on something with an animal. And I'm going to do Dragon Ride because a dragon is an animal. And I want more time on that. The next day is Speed Skating. So set a time limit and see how far you can get. For that one, I'm choosing to do my other full coverage piece for this month, which is Mini Bird Song. They have a full, a full version of this as well. This is a Heaven and Earth design um, by Tatiana Fedrova. And this is the mini version. I blew it up bigger because that picture is really tiny. Um, there's a... Uh, Nina Hobby Site. She's on Instagram um, and Facebook. She's doing the full version of this and she's done the whole top row and, and started in on the bottom second row. So pretty. And mine, it they won't have as near as much detail as hers, but it's still pretty. Um, so hers is gorgeous. I'm hoping mine will be half as gorgeous. And I'm doing this for Full Coverage Fanatics Air, I think, for for the quarterly sow. Um, yeah, so quick stitch iris was for the February flower, February flowers. It was flowers or pink. And these are blue and purple flowers, but they just, they count for the flowers part. And this will be for the quarterly air sow because currently I'm stitching up here where there's a lot of air. And birds and bees fly in the air. So that will work for that one. This one I am stitching on 40 count even weave. It's called Vertle. One over one half stitches. So this is where I'm at with that. The first column I did, I was trying to feather my stitches and that ended up 
backfiring on me because feathering on diagonals does not work, as you can see. Um, but I've been doing solid edges the other two rows and it looks better. Um, my This is a year of whips piece. I'm hoping to finish this first page by the end of my rotations. Um, I may, I don't know, I may still do columns. I was considering doing, working more like all the way to the edge of the page over here on some of the sky because it's literally all one color in a lot of the, the sky. Um, but I don't know. I still love my columns. <laughs> so we'll see what I do. I don't know. That's going to be for speed skating. I'll set myself a timer. I'm not sure how much, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have a time limit that is preset. You set your own time limit. So I will just pick something and see how far I go get. And maybe I will do like a before and after picture for posting in there to show how much I got done in half hour, hour, whatever I, whatever I choose. The 14th on Valentine's Day is for the medals. So you, for the, you know, go, the, the medals that the athletes earn. So you're to work on something that has metallics or beads. So I'm going to pull out Dragon Ride again because it has beads and probably some metallics, but it at least has beads. So I may even do some beads on that day just because I can. So hopefully I'll get, on the first day I work on it, hopefully I'll get to a point where I can see where some beads go. The next day is for the skeleton, which is a an event, a name of an event, where, you, where one person goes down the bobsled track by themselves with no, um, no bobsled. But because skeleton is also refers to a skeleton, they want you to stitch on something Halloween themed. Um, I don't have anything Halloween themed in any of my stash and I'm okay with that. I'm not a big Halloween stitcher, but I figured I'd do Dragon Ride again because dragons kind of sort of go with Halloween. That particular piece doesn't look super Halloween-y, but it's a dragon, so I'm going with it. It might be a stretch, but I'm doing it. The 16th is a Friday biathlon, so they want you to work on two pieces. So I'll be working on my Midsummer Roses, which, which I shared earlier. This will be the first day I do some on that. And I'll also be doing Nantucket Rose, which is my February Fancy Lady. I started this last February and thought it'd be fun to pull her out again this February, since that was when I started her. So she will be one of the two pieces I work on. And that's a Friday. Um, the 16th is a Friday, so um, I tend to sometimes have a little extra time on Fridays to stitch, so hopefully I can have a decent chunk on both of these that day. And here's where I'm at on her. I've converted her to be Anne of Avonlea, sitting on the coast, um, fainting away as she writes her novel. So that's how far I've gotten. I may work a little bit on her and I may also head up the trees during my time in February. So <clears throat> this is a lavender and lace and I'm doing her on 32 count linen by MCG Textiles in the color silver, which is another discontinued color that I found on Amazon actually. Um, the 17th is figure skating, so they want you to do something with specialty stitches, and I originally was going to do the Twisted Band Sampler because that's got lots of specialty stitches and I love that piece, but the next band I have to do is a cross stitch only band, and I don't really want to skip to a specialty stitch band because I want to make sure my counting is correct. So I decided I would give Snow Queen another day because these snowflakes in here are specialty stitches or like Smyrna crosses and there are also some you know of these little chronic things around in her dress so I saved let's see which side these ones I think these ones I did not do these yet and I'll save those I know I have a different day for her in February I won't do these specialty <laughs> stitches on that day 
so that I can do her do the specialty stitches on the 17th. So I'll probably do more than just that, but I'll make sure to at least do those to count for the sow. So she'll actually get two days in February. I had forgotten that. So she'll get two days in February, which will be nice. <clears throat> and the 18th is goes with the theme of the Olympics this year called Heaven, Earth, and Humanity. So this is the day I'm going to do my nativity one more day because Jesus came from heaven to earth to save humanity. Boom. So I love that. I had to do that one. And it is a year of, year of whips piece. So I'll try to work more on that column that I showed earlier to get a little bit more done on that column. I'm getting lots of stuff here. The 19th, I will do, it's, it's 15 sports represented. So they want you to do something related to 15 minutes or 15 stitches or let's see. And I think I chose Midsummer Roses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen. If you can count the space, there are fifteen letters and a space in the title of Midsummer Roses. So this is going to get some love on the fifteenth. <clears throat> Olympic Village is on the twentieth, so do something with the house or building. So I'm going to do Nantucket Rose. There's a little building down here. Maybe I'll even work over and actually work on the building that day. And the next one is 79 nations are represented, so something related to those numbers. Originally, I was going to do the story time sampler because story time squished together into one word is nine letters and sampler is seven. But I finished my goal on that, so I think I'll do Midsummer Roses on this too. And the title doesn't work with the, the letters, the numbers I mean, but I might pick like 79 minutes or something like that. And... It's a Wednesday. I don't always have time to stitch on Wednesday. Worst case, it'll be seven minutes. <laughs> One sitting, nine minutes, another sitting. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'm going to do this on that day regardless. Um, <clears throat> I may just do 79 minutes total and then just keep track of myself on a stopwatch on my phone. And, and when I get to 79, even if it's in chunks throughout the day, and when I get to 79, I'll post before and after of that. So maybe that's what I'll do. 22 is for international competition. Do something with an international or travel theme. So I'm going to do Nantucket Rose again for that because she reminds me of Anne of Green Gables, who is from Canada, which is not my country. So it's international. And Bird Song on the 23rd. I'm going to do, it's for host, the host city, Pyeongchang. So something related to P or C. This was a stretch, <laughs> I will admit. Bird song doesn't have any P's or C's. None of my February pieces had P's or C's. None of my Year of Whips pieces, or very few of them did. And I needed to fit this in again. But doesn't it have pretty colors? <laughs> so that's a stretch. I'm doing bird song on that day because of the pretty colors in it. So I'm making it work. The 24th is for four new events, um, so try something new. And I'm gonna do bird song on that one again because when I started it, I had never used 40 count before. I had never heard of 40 count even weave, which that is. So it is a fairly new to me product. Currently, I'm not really doing any, I mean I could, there could be some, again, like specialty stitches on the Twisted Band Sampler I would not have done before, but again, my next chunk on that is cross stitching, not not specialty stitches. So I'm gonna do bird song again because I do need more time on that one to give it at least four days. So that was a new fabric for me, one over one half stitches on forty count even weave. Um, even though I've been doing it for a few few times now. Um, and then the 25th is a closing ceremony, so they want you to work on something that's close to finishing. That one I, I'm going to leave open for now, and just you'll wait, have to wait and see what I do, because I'm not sure what... I was thinking maybe a story time sampler if I'm not done with February, which I am. Maybe the banner on the story time sampler to finish it. Um, something I had thought of recently was my greetings from the parks. I really want to finish this in February, so if I don't 
get it done before the 25th, just in travel pieces. I can bring this out on the 25th and just bust it out at home on that last day. So this might see my closing ceremony day. Um, if it's already done before the 25th, I'll have to think of something else. Um, and I may do something like finish a column on the nativity or finish a column on bird song or, you know, I'm not really sure. Finish a section on Midsummer. Do something that has to do with finishing. So I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with that. The 26th, 27th, and 28th are the last days in February. They're not part of this, the Olympics challenge. So for those, I put in some more single days of working on things to make sure that some of my focus pieces got a full four days. So Birdsong, Minnie will get work one day, Midsummer Roses will get a day, and Nantucket Rose will get a day. So that's my February. It's a little bit crazy. I really liked my five-day rotation in, Jan in um, January. Um, so this will definitely be different. I'm curious to see if I like it. If I like this, then I'll go ahead and do the World Cup challenge in, I think, June. And maybe the, even the midterm elections challenge in November, which is also like this, where there's daily challenges. If I don't like it as much as I liked my five-day rotation, I'll just go back to always doing a five-day rotation, even when those other styles come around. And I'll just do the Olympics one. But it's the Olympics, so we got to celebrate somehow. <clears throat> I just noticed my note here. Hipster Stitcher, Rachel, is having her first baby in February. So she decided to put together an Instagram baby shower where the first seven days of February you can work on something that has peak, because it's going to be a girl or is a farm themed because that's her nursery theme or letter V for Vivian, which is the name of that she's gonna name her baby. So um, while I was working on, I think it was Saturday, I was working on some pink thread in my story time sampler and posted that for um, on Instagram for her baby shower and tagged her baby Danowitz tag and there's still some more days left. I knew Iris is blue and <clears throat> blue and purple, so that wouldn't work for her baby shower. So I knew I needed to make sure I got some pink um, posted about in my story time sampler because um, <clears throat> Secret Garden had some pink in it. <clears throat> and I don't have any farm themes going on right now, and I don't think I have anything with a V. So. That's what I did. So there's still a few days if you want to participate. If you know her and watch her or follow her on Instagram, um, you can participate with that as well. And I think that's everything. So it's kind of a long video this time, but that's probably how it's going to be with monthly updates. And, and with the Olympics adding a little extra dimension to it, there's a little bit more going on, but it's still fun. So I hope with that you enjoy your stitching this month and if you're doing the Olympics challenges, um, I'll be excited to see your progress as well. See what you choose because it's fun to see what different people choose for the different themes. And I'm going to try to post my progress in the event thread for that, for the Olympics challenge. Um, it might be like the day after, like the morning. The morning after I'll post what I did the day before just because the lighting is better. But I'm going to try to do that. So <clears throat> anyways, have a wonderful week or wonderful month. And I may come back um, the beginning of the month, at the beginning of each week and do another little stitch along. So you can be looking forward to that. And happy stitching. Bye. <laughs>